Welcome to Work World Writing. I just finished a course with my students and a question came into my head. Why do my students get so many A's? So when I first started teaching, it wouldn't take long, you know, before my students were all over the place and sometimes I didn't even realize it. So as a teacher, some things start popping into my head like, oh, my students didn't show up or some of them were misbehaving and that's why their grades were low or they didn't hand anything in. Maybe they missed an entire assignment or maybe they didn't understand the concept fully. Uh, some of them may just miss a couple points on a test or maybe they didn't follow my assignment instructions correctly. And those are some of the thoughts that, that I think teachers would think about when they're trying to analyze why students get the grades that they do. And then when we think about students, it uh, may be a little different. Uh, so for students, maybe they think uh, the subject is boring. Uh, I don't like the teacher, that's why I got a bad grade. Assignment issues, this one's very common. Students will say, you know, I hate tests, or I don't like homework, or quizzes throw me off. Whatever it is, lots of assignment issues. And sometimes students will think, I just don't like how this class is taught. And that's sort of where teachers and students are at. But if I think about it, which one matters more if I want to start thinking what's behind a grade and how to fix grades? doesn't matter what I think about it or, or what the students think about it. And personally, i found that if I can focus on, on the things that the students think about and care about and try and fix those things, um, it helps with their students' grades. So let's take a look at the students and what they're thinking. I have found that there's a root cause here. It doesn't cover all of them, but it covers most of them. It's the grading system. Let me break it down for you. These are actually secondary reasons behind the grades. So the primary reason is actually the grading system itself. So why does a student get, let's say, an F, for example? It's the grading system, primarily. The graded assignments averaged below 50. Why did my student get a D? Because the graded assignments averaged between 50 and 59, and a C was between 60 and 69, and a B was between 70 and 79, and an A is between 80 and 100. Your numbers might change a little bit, but, but that's the primary reason for why students get the grades they do, because of the math involved. I'm not saying the secondary reasons don't matter, but I need to keep those primary reasons and I'll show you why. You see, if we get inside the student's head, I've got the start of the course and the end of the course, and the students are starting with A's and ending all over the board. But at the start of a course, a student's usually thinking, if I try hard, I'm gonna do okay in this course. But at some point, students realize that it actually doesn't matter how hard they try. It doesn't matter if I listen well. It doesn't even matter if I show up. It doesn't matter if I understand stuff. It doesn't even matter if I'm well behaved. What really matters is doing or not doing well on assignments. And when students figure that out, it changes their motivation towards the class. And so I realized that traditional grading systems reduce student motivation and therefore reduce their grades. So let's take a closer look at that shift, how students move from trying hard into doing or not doing well on assignments. Once students realize that all of their grades are just dependent on these assignments, uh, they start to develop what I call tricks of the trade, assignment tricks. And so students will start asking questions like, is this assignment worth marks? And which parts are worth the most marks? Sometimes they want me to actually mark it before I officially mark it. Sometimes they start cramming and forgetting material. I see them starting to share answers. They ask for extensions on due dates. And sometimes they just flat out cheat. And so these are all little ways that students start to work the system in order to get good grades without doing a lot of work. Teachers know this, and so teachers have their own approach to assessment. And so teachers have these main goals when it comes to their assessments. One of their goals is to get the grades that you deserve. And what I mean by that is teachers often have this preconceived notion of where students are at, you know, based on things like attendance and motivation and how hard they try and whether their notebooks are neat and all these little things. A teacher has an idea of a grade that a student deserves. Teachers also want to make sure that those assignments they give out, that they're accurate, that there is no cheating and things like that happening. And I hope you don't think this way, but I have found some teachers that do. Some teachers want their class to end up with a nice little spread of A's to D's. So those are little goals that teachers have. So the teachers will also use some tricks of the trade to help protect their assessments, knowing the games that the students play. And so they start off with some marking schemes. I've got rubrics that are just, I know how they work really well as a teacher and I can make them broad enough so that again, I can make sure students are getting the grades they deserve. I use assignments with loopholes 
holes, little spots in my assignments that I know students are going to kind of overlook or maybe I briefly mentioned it in class and most of them probably weren't listening and so they'll, they'll miss a little spot on that assignment. I'll guard my explanations. I'll withhold my help. I'll use su surprise assignments that are worth marks in order to get my nice little grade spread. I'll use unrealistic time lim limits. No second tries and, and no feedback. All of this boils down to, for students at least, a game. And students sometimes, you know, even though they'll put in hours and hours of time into assignments, somehow they always get the same grade because the teacher's better at the system than they are. Traditional grading systems reduce student motivation and therefore grades. At the start of the course to the end of the course, there's three big problems. Number one, students realize everything is about assessments. I'm teaching to my assessments. Teachers are gathering assessments and, and they're, they, they're, the assessments are their gold. If the teachers don't have those little assessments, then they really don't have grades in the class and they don't have anything. It's all about assessments. Students get very tired of the assessment game, especially when they continually lose at it. And when students get a couple of permanent damaging assessments under their belt, the motivation is, is sometimes hard to get back and students do poorly. So when I look at these three big problems and I apply the 3P, the 3P grading system to them, it annihilates all the problems. Number one, it is not all about assessments. It's just not. You're graded on your participation and your progress. That's how hard you try and whether or not you get better. And students like that, especially when they have a say in it. How hard they try matters from the start of the course to the end of the course. And getting better matters. Number two, there is no assessment games at all. So it's not about teachers giving out little assignments and collecting those assignments. And some of them are tricky and have little marking schemes. Uh, in fact, again, it's about participation and progress. You start to have conversations about progress and are you getting better and how can we make sure you're getting better. And now the delivery of the class is different. I'm starting to not just deliver based on assessments that I'm giving, but I'm, I'm delivering material so that you're learning something. I actually care about what you're, what you're learning and want you to learn. It's kinda, it, be, it becomes fun for students. And, and at this point, many teachers will say, well, Brian, you're just creating a grading system to give them easy grades. But what I've found is that participation and progress equals quality performance. In the end, my students are producing quality work, which is what I wanted in the beginning, which is what I've been grading for as a traditional teacher for years and years. I've always been grading the quality of their work. But when I grade for participation and grade for progress, in other words, give them credit for those things, then the quality of the assignments increase to those higher levels. And the last one, a couple permanent damaging assessments, it doesn't exist. When we grade for performance, it's based on trends of various assignments. In a nutshell, my students start with A's and the vast majority end with A's simply because it's a motivating grading system that leads to learning. Students basically just say, I like this class. Their motivation is high and they do well. Thanks for listening. More to come.